This video illustrates a novel approach to creating a Windows dual boot or multi-boot system. Multi-booting is the practice of installing two or more OS partitions on a computer and using a menu at boot time to select which of the partitions to boot. Many people are familiar with using cloning or imaging tools to back up and restore Windows, but what if we could use the same tools to create a multi-boot system? That's the subject we'll explore in this video. For this demonstration, I'll be using the cloning and imaging tool Macrium Reflect. While other imaging and cloning utilities will work for parts of the process, Macrium Reflect has a nice boot repair tool that will help us complete the process. The boot repair tool seems to be available only on the rescue media though, so we'll need to boot from the rescue media when it comes time to use it. Perhaps that's why some Macrium users aren't aware of its existence. By the way, I will not be discussing Linux here. Some of the same ideas may be applied to a Linux tool boot, but a key element we'll be using is the boot repair tool, which only fixes Windows. It does not fix Linux boot problems, so this video will only discuss Windows multiboots. Throughout this video, I'll use this graphical metaphor from Windows Disk Management to illustrate the partition layout on a hard disk. For example, suppose we have this OEM installation. We could start by shrinking the existing OS partition to create some space, then duplicate the OS partition via cloning or by restoring an image to create a second or even a third OS installation. Finish by reconfiguring the Windows boot menu so we can select which partition to boot and we've got a quick multi-boot system. This should give you a hint of how we'll be using Macrium Reflect. The technique I'll be illustrating will focus on imaging and restoring, but note for the record that cloning works just as well. With cloning, I'd be juggling multiple hard drives though, while with imaging, I can be drawing from different images stored on a single external drive. Before doing anything, I recommend making a full disk backup image of the OEM installation. While this is a desirable safety measure in case we mess something up along the way, it's also convenient to be able to return the computer to its OEM state if you want to sell or donate it at some point in the future. Next, decide which partitions we'll be keeping. If your system came with recovery partitions, you can leave them be if you wish, though I typically get rid of them. After all, a Microsoft recovery partition is essentially a customized form of dual boot to provide an alternate environment from which to repair the computer if the main Windows partition can't be used. We can do many of the same tasks with an alternate Windows partition though, so in a way a recovery partition is more or less redundant in a dual boot system. Besides, remember that if we ever want to get the recovery partitions back, we still have the OAM backup image. If you do decide to keep extra factory or recovery partitions, be forewarned that the further we get from the factory OEM setup, it can be difficult to relink them to the F8 or recovery menu. So even if you keep them, they might not work. When we're ready to get to work, we could start by sliding the Windows partition forward and shrinking it to create more space for the extra OSs. Rather than employing a third-party partition utility to resize and slide partitions around, however, Here's a more straightforward approach. Simply clear the hard disk and restore just the partitions we want to keep, resizing them on the fly during the restore process. Restoring is typically faster than sliding an existing partition anyway, so this method is actually quicker too. Of course, the prerequisite to using images is we first have to have previous installations to work with. If starting with an existing Windows installation, such as a factory restore perhaps, Make a Macrium backup image, then either erase the disk or use a second disk to do a clean install of another OS. Then make a Macrium backup image of that one too. Using cloning or imaging techniques like this allows a modular approach that lets us install two or more pre-existing Windows installations at will in any order. Most screen captures in this video will involve dual boot scenarios, though understand that we can just as easily use the same technique to create triple boot systems or even more, subject to available disk space. While it's popular amongst dual booters to install different Windows versions to each partition, there are also advantages to running parallel installations of the same Windows version. For example, you could have one environment set up with tools specific to your day job and another dedicated to hobby stuff like music or photo editing tools. Or, if we're worried about Windows 10, we could have one partition on which to test out the latest Windows upgrade without burning our bridges and keeping a fallback in case the update doesn't go well. By the way, if you use two partitions with the same Windows version, I suggest changing the desktop wallpaper as an easy reminder of which partition you're in. 
it's easy to forget after you've been working for a while. I also like to create a separate partition for my data files. This is a personal choice, but it is a convenient way to keep my data accessible as I switch between one OS to the other. This partition can be on the same disk or a second disk. If we use a single disk, it helps to have plenty of space on the boot disk. Some people seem to think it's better to dual boot with OS's on separate disks. I disagree. From a security or failure mitigation standpoint, there's no logical basis for that being a better strategy. It offers no advantages other than having more space for each OS to spread out. Keep in mind, though, that after separating our data onto its own partition, the OS itself isn't going to take up that much room. It's the user data that takes up the most space. If our data is elsewhere, we can easily fit multiple Windows partitions on a typical modern hard disk. I find it more sensible to put as many OS's as possible on a single boot disk and use the extra drive for my data. That way I can use a fast SSD for the boot disk and a large traditional hard disk with lots of storage space for my data. This allows all OS's to take advantage of the speed of an SSD and also has the advantage of keeping my data consolidated. There are a few factors which should be taken into account when deciding whether to build a GPT-style dual boot or an MBR-style dual boot. Naturally, if your computer hardware supports UEFI only or legacy only, you'll need to choose a compatible partitioning scheme. In addition, you'll want to choose GPT if you have a boot disk larger than 2 terabytes, or if you want to have more than 4 primary partitions on the boot disk. On the other hand, if your plans include Windows 7 or Vista, you're better off with legacy booting because those OS's do not support secure boot, which is typically part and parcel with UEFI. Other than that, it's largely a matter of personal preference. There are those who will argue that UEFI is safer than legacy mode because of secure boot, but in my opinion, any advantage is largely theoretical and not anything I'm going to lose any sleep over. Besides, if your plans include Windows 7, you won't be able to use secure boot anyway, so any theoretical advantage becomes moot. In contrast, legacy boot disks can be easier to manage, not least because UEFI and secure boot impose extra roadblocks and efforts to boot from external media. In this segment, we'll detail how to dual boot on an MBR style disk. This is easier and more universal than using a GPT disk, but has two principal limitations. First, the computer's BIOS must support legacy booting, sometimes called CSM mode. Note some recent computers are starting to come without legacy support, which will restrict them to only booting from GPT disks. Second, the boot disk will be limited to no more than 2 terabytes. Booting in UEFI mode requires a boot disk with a GPT partition table, while booting in legacy mode requires a boot disk with an MBR partition table. MBR disks are limited to a maximum size of 2 terabytes, so if you want to boot from an MBR disk, it will have to be under 2 terabytes. Note this applies only to the boot disk. We can use a combination of an MBR boot disk with GPT data disks if we wish, but to boot in legacy mode, the boot disk must be MBR, and thus by extension cannot be more than 2 terabytes. Remember though, even an SSD of less than 2 terabytes can still support several OS installations. OK, if the computer supports legacy boot and the boot disk is not more than 2 terabytes, let's continue. If we have a system reserved partition from an MBR disk among our Macrium images, start by restoring that as the first partition on the target disk. This is where the dual boots BCD will live. It doesn't matter which OS this startup partition came from. All we really need is a partition which Macrium Reflex Boot Repair Tool will fill as appropriate. Note that this will automatically reinitialize the target disk as MBR. If you don't already have this image, don't worry. Just attach the new disk to any working Windows system, initialize it as MBR, and create a small NTFS partition of around 300 megabytes. Make sure to mark this active so it will act as a startup partition, although if the set active option is grayed out, you may need to resort to disk part to set it active. Here are the disk part commands you'll need to use. If you're reusing a disk previously initialized to GPT, you can reinitialize it as MBR after removing any partitions. Then you can create your 300 megabyte partition. Back in Macrium Reflect, restore the OS partition from one of the images. Plan ahead to leave enough space for another OS to follow. 
It's worth emphasizing here that it doesn't matter whether the OS image was originally from a legacy system or from a UEFI system. Windows installed on a UEFI GPT partition is no different than on a legacy MBR partition. It's only the initial boot launching process that is different. A Windows image from a GPT disk can be restored to an MBR disk and it will boot just fine. Then restore the second OS image. This can be either a duplicate of the first OS or it can be from a different Windows image. We now have two OS partitions, and all that's left is the fix to startup partition to tie everything together. Remember that the boot repair tool is only available on the rescue media, so make sure the BIOS is set to legacy mode and boot from the rescue media. We can be in either legacy or UEFI mode to restore the partitions, but to use the boot repair tool, we'll need the BIOS set to a compatible mode. Find and click the Macroom Reflect Fix Windows Boot Problems function. Macroom should find both Windows installations. Confirm the startup partition is correct and finish. And now we have a functioning legacy style dual boot system. Boot into each OS and check disk management. Check that the correct partition is marked boot and C. Remove the drive letter from the alternate OS partition. This will help prevent accidental tampering with the alternate OS while it's dormant. Repeat the process for the other OS. Check disk management to confirm the correct partition is boot in C. Remove the drive letter from the dormant OS partition. If you left unallocated space for a data partition, you can use Windows Disk Management to create and format a partition for your data after booting into either OS partition. Creating a dual boot on a GPT style disk is very similar to the process with an MBR disk. A GPT disk cannot be booted in legacy or CSM mode. It requires UEFI mode. UEFI doesn't boot from an active partition. It boots from a special EFI partition. Here's an illustration with two Windows 10 partitions. We need an EFI partition, which can be drawn from any source image. The OS partitions can be restored using Macrium Reflect just as before, and the BCD will be installed to the EFI partition. In this screen capture, we'll restore Windows 10 and Windows 8 images. Since this is a GPT disk, be sure to include an EFI partition, though as before, this can come from any image. After restoring the first OS, find the second OS image and restore that OS partition. Remember that we already have a startup partition, so we only need the OS partition. Now we'll use Macroom Reflex Fix Windows Boot Problems function to tie everything together. Make sure the BIOS is set to UEFI mode and boot from the Macroom Rescue Media. While we can restore partitions while booted into either legacy or UEFI mode, to use the Boot Repair tool on a GPT disk, we'll need to boot the Rescue Media in UEFI mode. Macroom should find both OS partitions. Confirm the boot disk on which Macroom will modify the EFI and BCD, and finish. We now have a functioning UEFI dual boot system. As before, enter each OS and check disk management to confirm the proper partition is marked boot and C, and remove the drive letter from the dormant OS partition. Repeat with the other OS. Confirm the proper partition is boot and C, and remove the drive letter from the dormant partition to hinder any accidental tampering. If we want, we can customize the boot menu with BCD edit commands. Boot into the OS you want to change and use the BCD edit command from an administrator command prompt. If your plans include Windows 7, note a relevant limitation of building a UEFI dual boot is that we cannot easily convert a legacy boot Windows 7 image to UEFI boot. 
Windows includes a couple EFI-related files when installed in UEFI mode. Windows 8 and 10 do include those files even when installed in MBR mode, which makes their images restorable to both MBR and GPT boot disks. However, Windows 7 omits the extra EFI files when installed in legacy mode. So if we try to image from an MBR disk and restore it to a UEFI system, it will be missing those crucial files and won't boot. If you wish to include Windows 7 in a UEFI dual boot, it's best to have a Windows 7 image that was previously installed in UEFI mode. This doesn't seem to be a problem with Windows 8 or 10, however. Even legacy mode installs include the EFI files, so they can be imaged and restored to either legacy or UEFI, and they will still boot. Here's a little quirk of the Macroom Reflect program. If restoring to a disk with no partitions, Macroom will initialize the disk as MBR or GPT to be consistent with the source from which the image was made. Even if the disk is already initialized, before cloning or restoring, Macroom will change it, if need be, to match the image. It does this only if there are no pre-existing partitions. If the disk already has a partition on it that will be kept, Macroom will leave the partitioning style alone. The quirk is what happens if there are pre-existing partitions, but they will be deleted. If Macrium deletes all partitions as part of the restore process, then it will consider the disk effectively blank and reinitialize it if necessary to match the source image's partitioning style. We can prevent Macrium from reinitializing the disk if we pre-partition the disk with at least one partition that will not be deleted. This is a useful tip if you want to convert a GPT Windows install to MBR. It's as simple as creating a small MBR partition beforehand and then restoring the GPT image to follow it. Macrium's boot repair tool will fix it up to work in legacy MBR mode. Note there are two different styles of BCD boot menus as used by various Windows versions. Windows 7 used a basic black and white text mode menu while Windows 8 and 10 use a graphical boot menu. Technically, either of these can be used in the startup partition. Macrium's Fix Windows Boot Problems function can install either one. However, another Macrium quirk is that it will default to the boot menu that's consistent with the first OS partition on the disk. In other words, if you create a Win 7 plus 10 dual boot, Macrium will use the basic black and white boot menu. If you make it a 10 plus 7 dual boot, it will use the graphical boot menu. Note if you have a preference for one or the other, you can manually change it afterward. Just boot into the OS corresponding to the menu version you want, open a command prompt with admin privileges, and issue the BCD boot command. When restoring Windows from an image, there are a couple basic boot issues that need to be addressed in order for Windows to boot properly. A multi-boot system begins from a primary startup partition, which then must chain to the OS partition selected to boot. In Windows 7, 8, 8.1, or 10, this redirection is controlled by the boot configuration data. When using the Microsoft Boot Manager for multibooting, a single BCD store in the startup partition will contain separate boot item entries for each bootable OS partition, from which the user will select which OS he or she wishes to boot. For this to work right, the BCD must be adjusted so each boot entry knows which OS partition to boot. The BCD can be rebuilt manually, but happily, Macrium Reflect has a handy boot repair function called Fix Windows Boot Problems. That will automatically rebuild the BCD for us. Note that the Macrium Reflect boot repair tool only works with Microsoft style multibooting. To understand this distinction, it may be helpful to look at how Microsoft's boot manager compares to third party boot managers. Microsoft's multiboot method uses a single, multiple entry BCD in a fixed startup partition with boot item entries pointing to each boot option. The alternate partition remains fully accessible to the booted OS, though if its drive letter is removed, this should help prevent the user from accidentally messing with it. With a third party boot manager, each OS partition has its own single entry BCD, and the third party boot manager in the startup partition uses its own proprietary menu to select which BCD to use. The boot manager manipulates the partition table or EFI partition on the fly to change the active partition, and often will make the partition hidden to hinder the active OS from tampering with it. Third party boot managers can more thoroughly keep OSs apart from each other, and some boot managers can even remove the partition table entry so the booted OS is completely blind to any alternate partition. 
After all, how can Windows tamper with something it doesn't even know is there? Note we're just temporarily removing the partition table entry, not removing the partition itself. Dual booting with Linux will usually involve the Linux Grub bootloader, which operates in a similar fashion to many third-party boot managers. It expects Windows to have its own BCD to which Grub will chain. Another issue has to do with the C drive letter. Windows keeps track of which partition is C by recording the partition signature in the registry's H key local machine, system, mounted devices, registry key. Here you'll see the C partition is matched to a partition with a unique partition signature. When the registry is cloned from the source, you want this to be changed to be the clone's partition signature. Otherwise, when the clone boots, it will think the original source partition is still C. MacRealm Reflex Fix Windows Boot Problems function includes an option to reset the disk ID. Resetting the disk ID has the effect of resetting the partition signatures, thereby ensuring that when Windows boots, it won't find a partition signature matching the old registry entry. Windows will then strike the previous value from the registry, call its own partition C, and reset the corresponding signature into the registry. Windows 8 and 10 include a feature called Fast Boot in Windows 8 or Fast Startup in Windows 10. It's hardware dependent, so your computer may or may not implement it. Fast Boot or Startup is a kind of specialized hibernation feature. When Windows is shut down, its running state is partially saved so that the next time you turn the computer on, it's supposed to boot faster. However, this hibernation causes havoc with any kind of multi boot configuration. It can cause corruption when going from one OS to another and the computer thinks it's supposed to be starting from a cold boot. For safety, make sure you turn this feature off if you have it. Incidentally, Fast Startup can also impact ordinary cloning or imaging results as well. If you clone or image Windows 8 or 10 while booted from external media, you could be copying a hibernated OS. This may not end well when the image is subsequently restored. In contrast, if you clone or image while actively booted into Windows, Windows is not in a hibernated state. Through the use of VSS, Windows can copy in-use files and the copy will be ready to start from a cold boot. It's probably more common for users to make their backups from within Windows, so that may be why more people aren't familiar with this problem. The bottom line is you don't want to copy a hibernated OS, so either make your images from within Windows or disable fast startup before shutting down. In conclusion, we've seen how cloning and imaging tools can be used to create a Windows multi-boot system, and how Macrium Reflex Boot Repair Tool will easily rebuild the BCD to make it all functional. And don't forget the ongoing vital role imaging tools have in backing up your multi-boot system, in case it needs to be restored in the future. Even if you use another technique to create your multi-boot system, maybe you've gleaned from this video some insight into the role of the various pieces and how they work together. If that better prepares you to repair and maintain your own system, I hope you've found this video useful.